Hello my dear friends, I'm in Istanbul. In this video I will show you how I travel spending very little money. We will have a tour around the city, visit great historical places. I will show you where I'm staying, how to use the public transportation and also some places in Istanbul where you can eat not expensive food. But before we start, a couple of interesting facts about the city. Did you know that Istanbul is the only transcontinental city in the world? The Bosphorus Strait divides two continents and passes through Istanbul. On the western side of the Bosphorus Strait, you are in Europe, but if you cross to the other side, you are in Asia. Also, Istanbul is one of the most populated cities in the world. Officially, around 16 million people live here in 2023. The city was founded in the 7th century BC as Byzantium by Greeks. In the 4th century AD, its name was changed to Constantinople, and from 1930 it is known as Istanbul. It was the capital city of three major empires – the Eastern Roman Empire, the Byzantine Empire and the Ottoman Empire. But did you know that Istanbul is not the capital city of Turkey nowadays? When the Turkish Republic was founded in 1923, Ankara became the new Turkish capital. Also, Istanbul is known as the city of cats. Thousands of cats roam in the streets of the city and each of them seems to be as cared for as the humans that live here. If you've seen my other videos, you know that usually when I travel, I stay with Couchsurfing hosts because it lets you feel deeper the culture of the country and because it's also free accommodation. This trip is not an exception, so this is where I'm staying in Istanbul, in this apartment with a beautiful view. If you've never heard about Couchsurfing community, you can check this video to learn about it. My host went to work early and he kindly said that I can eat anything I find in the fridge. So after a quick breakfast, it's time to explore the city. I'm staying on the Asian side of Istanbul and the majority of historical places are located in the European side. So I will go there by public transportation. It is very easy using the Google Maps. It's necessary just to enter the location where you want to go and it will show you different transportation options. It wasn't possible to get to my destination using just one type of transportation. So first I took a metro. There are vending machines at all metro stations where you can buy a ticket. You can choose the English language at the machine. It's possible to buy a 3-pass ticket for 60 Turkish Liras. Or if you stay in Istanbul for a while and you are going to use public transportation quite a lot, it's better to get Istanbul card. It costs 70 Liras and then you need to upload money to it. You can pay with the card for all types of transportation in Istanbul and the rides will cost much cheaper using Istanbul card. Plus, if you change transportation within two hours, then next rides will be with an additional discount. I already had Istanbul card from my previous visits of the city. The metro was quite crowded and it took me about half an hour to get to the necessary location. Look at this beauty! This is a Bosphorus Strait. I came to Üsküdar, it is still the Asian side and now we will go to Europe by ferry. You know there are expensive bus ferries tours, but you do not really need them. You can take a ferry along the strait, which is basically the same thing, and it will not cost you much. Going by ferry is really enjoyable. It's definitely my favorite type of transportation. It's 
so I crossed the Bosphorus Strait and I'm in Europe now. I came to Aminonu and now we will visit a major cultural and historical place in Istanbul, Hagia Sophia. There was a huge line at the entrance, but surprisingly it was going quite fast, so I didn't have to wait for too long. As Hagia Sophia is a mosque, there is a dress code you have to follow to enter it. Women need to cover their heads and they cannot wear open clothes, and men cannot enter in shorts. Hagia Sophia means holy wisdom, and actually it was built as a church in the year 325. It was damaged by fire in the 5th century, then it was rebuilt. In the 6th century it burned down again, so the last version of the church was built in the year 537. Later an earthquake caused some damage to it, but for the most part the structure we see today is the same. It dates back to the 6th century. Hagia Sophia remained the church for over a thousand years. When Constantinople fell to the Ottoman Empire in 1453, it was converted into a mosque. Hagia Sophia remained a mosque for 500 years. <laughs> I got this one. In 1934, the first Turkish president and founder of modern Turkey, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, secularized Hagia Sophia and converted it into a museum. And in the year 2020, it was converted back to mosque again. You know, when Hagia Sophia had status of a museum, you had to buy a ticket to visit it. But now, as it's an operating mosque, the entrance is free. The central feature of Hagia Sophia is its colossal dome. Originally constructed as a Christian cathedral, Hagia Sophia had Christian mosaics on the walls, showing scenes from the life of Jesus Christ, the Virgin Mary and various saints. Later Ottomans did not destroy them, but just covered them with layers of paint and Islamic calligraphy. So in some places where the paint went off, you can still see the mosaics. Unfortunately, almost all of them are located on the second floor and now it's closed for restoration, so it's impossible to get there. Having both Christian mosaics and Islamic calligraphy together is a unique feature of Hagia Sophia. Very close to Hagia Sophia, there is a Basilica cistern, a very popular touristic destination. The entrance is behind my back. It was built in the 6th century by a Byzantine emperor and basically cistern is an underground water storage chamber. But there are other cisterns in Istanbul too. I already visited Basilica Cistern when I first visited Istanbul several years ago and now the entrance there costs 450 Turkish Liras. So I decided to show you another cistern that can be visited for free. It's only 10 minutes walk from here, so let's check it out. The entrance to the cistern is here, inside the shop selling rugs, carpets and souvenirs. I will leave the location of the place in the description of this video. It's written here that to visit the cistern you need to get an appointment one day before. Is it possible to see the cistern? Sure, look at from the corner, mm -hmm. there's a stairs, you should go down. So they let me see the cistern even though I didn't make any appointment in advance. Probably because I came at the beginning of December when the tourist season was over. In the past, in Istanbul, rainwater gathered from the roofs was collected in small cisterns in the basements of houses. Later, during Byzantine and Ottoman periods, much larger cisterns were built for water collection. The Byzantines equipped Istanbul with more than 100 cisterns so that it would not be deprived of water during its frequent sieges, because Istanbul's water mostly came from outside via aqueducts. And nowadays, cisterns of Istanbul are only touristic attractions. They are not used for supplying water anymore. 
They made the museum in the cistern with stands showing some historical information. And they also exhibit some little statues here that can be bought in their souvenir shop. This cistern is not as big as Basilica cistern, but it's still interesting to visit. And this place is not crowded, so it's possible to take very nice photos without hundreds of tourists, for those who are interested. By the way, this cistern, along with other cisterns in the city, was built in the 6th century. The Blue Mosque, located next to Hagia Sophia, just across the square, is another iconic place in Istanbul. It was built at the beginning of the 17th century, and it's the only mosque in Istanbul that has six minarets. When it was first built, this provoked hostility, because at that time, Mecca was the only temple with six minarets. That is why many Muslim people saw it as disrespect to the Kaaba. To amend this, Sultan Ahmed, that ordered construction of the mosque, financed the seventh minaret for the mosque in Mecca. The issue was solved. This mosque has very specific visiting hours. It is closed for visitors during prayers from 12 to 1.30 p.m. and from 3 to 4 p.m. and it closes at 5.30. Plus, on Fridays it doesn't open until 2 p.m. Only those who come to pray can enter in those hours. So if you have limited time and want to see the mosque, plan your visit accordingly. It's very beautiful here. You know, the Blue Mosque is actually a nickname. In Turkish, it's called Sultan Ahmed Mosque. The Blue Mosque gets its name because of its interior. It's made of 20,000 handmade tiles that are turquoise in color. And the upper levels of the mosque are also painted blue. That is why the building is called the Blue Mosque. There is a section here with free literature about Islam in different languages. This is the entrance to another historical place in Istanbul, Grand Bazaar. It's only 13 minutes walk from the Blue Mosque. And this is the largest and the oldest covered market in the world. It has been in operation since the 15th century. It has 61 covered streets and over 4,000 shops selling everything from leather goods and hand-woven carpets to archaic jewelry, foreign spices and souvenirs. Resembling a labyrinth, the market has 21 gates and 56 interconnected arched passageways. Besides being one of the busiest shopping places in the city, the market houses mosques, Turkish baths, inns, a school, eateries, cafes and water reservoirs. Around 250,000 people visit the Grand Bazaar every day. Bargaining or haggling is a part of shopping at Grand Bazaar. Turkish people always bargain and they always have some space for a discount. I even heard a joke that if you do not bargain, sellers get offended in Turkey. So don't forget about it. It's sometimes possible to buy the thing you want twice or three times cheaper than the price that they tell you in the beginning. At the end of each bustling week, after seeing guests from all over the world, the Grand Bazaar closes its gates to the public every Sunday, so plan your trip here accordingly. If you come to Istanbul, you should definitely visit some cafe or restaurant with a beautiful view on the Bosphorus Strait. You really get this aesthetic pleasure in places like this. 
I came to Nova Cafe, I chose it randomly, and it has a terrace with this amazing view. I ordered Turkish tea, now it's time to enjoy the beauty. By the way, I will leave the location of the place in the description below. They also have a little photo studio at the terrace of the cafe, where you can get those pretty Instagram-type photos in traditional clothes with the view of the city. I don't know if it's worth it, but in case you are interested, these are the prices for the photo sessions. You know, now at the cafe, I asked the photographer where I can pay for the tea, and he was like, are you a photographer too? I said, no, I'm a YouTuber. And he was like, okay, then this is from us. And he told the cashier that I had a photo session. That is why I don't need to pay. Thank you. What you should definitely try in Istanbul is bali kekmek, which is a fish sandwich. Usually it is fried or grilled mackerel served with vegetables inside a bun of Turkish bread. There are a lot of places selling it in Eminönü close to Galata Bridge. Here it costs 100 liras. But now I am planning to move to another popular part of Istanbul, Kadıköy, and there it's possible to eat bali kekmek cheaper. I am very hungry, but I took some fruits from home, so I can survive some more time. Ferries to Kadıköy from here go every 15 minutes. Eminönü is in European part of Istanbul and Kadıköy is already Asia. The fastest way to get there is by ferry, it takes only 20 minutes. Plus, it's another opportunity to cross the Bosphorus Strait. Ferries are very popular in Istanbul and they go to different parts of the city adjacent to the Bosphorus Strait or the Sea of Marmara. Ferries between popular destinations like from Eminönü to Kadıköy or from Üsküdar to Beşiktaş go very often throughout the day. But if you want to go to some less popular destination, you should always check the schedule before planning your trip. Because to some places, ferries go very seldom. You can check ferry schedules on the website şehirhatları.istanbul. I will leave the link to it below. When you come to Kadıköy, you can notice the difference of this part of the city right away. There is a lot of people, but almost no tourists here. There are no popular historical places in Kadıköy, but here you can feel the vibe of the city and see how the people that live in Istanbul feel it. Actually, this is a place where you need to walk without a map and purpose. Wherever you go, you will not miss anything, that's the secret. There are traditional Turkish cafes, bars and restaurants and a lot of stylish, cozy places with a nice atmosphere. Find your places and then, believe me, you will feel the beauty of this part of the city. And yes, here Balık Ekmek costs 85 Turkish Liras, but there are also places in Kadıköy where you can find it even for 70 Liras. You know, I changed my mind. I decided not to eat fish sandwich. When I saw a place preparing home food, I felt like eating there. Plus, places of this type, like open buffet, have very affordable prices, so you can definitely consider them to eat nice home-type food and not to pay too much. I love eggplants, so I took a Turkish dish, karne erik, which is eggplant stuffed with minced meat with some vegetables, and I took a little rice, and all this cost just 76 liras. The taste is also very good.
After dinner, I went to a weekly Couchsurfing meetup that is held at Kadikoi every Friday. It's a great opportunity to meet with new interesting people, especially when you travel to new places where you don't know anyone. My host also joined this meeting, and later we came back home together in his car. By the way, I never come to a host's place with empty hands, so this time, as I usually do, I brought him a chocolate from my home country. Today I will go to the European side again, and again it will be quite a long way for me to get there from the Asian side, as the distances in Istanbul are huge. So, I would like to give you some advice. If you are not going to stay with a Couchsurfing host like me, where basically you choose people to stay with, and very often you don't know exactly in which part of the city you will stay until you agree with the host, but if you stay in a hostel, some hotel, or maybe you will rent a room or an apartment on Airbnb, there are a lot of budget options in Istanbul. Then, if it's also your first time in Istanbul and if you want to visit the main historical places, you should stay in the European part of Istanbul. And I would say there are two best areas to stay. Either Sultan Ahmed, that is close to Hagia Sophia and the Blue Mosque, or somewhere near Taksim. I am planning to show it to you today. You can choose Sultan Ahmed if you want to stay in a more quiet area and if you like cafes, bars, clubs and nightlife, it's good to choose a place close to Taksim. Again, I took a metro to Üsküdar. And from there, I came to Besiktas by ferry. First, we will take a glimpse of a very beautiful place in Istanbul, Dolmabahce Palace. It's a luxurious palace built in the middle of the 19th century in Baroque style, which you will probably be surprised to see in Turkey. Sultan Abdul Mejid commissioned its construction because the medieval Topkapı Palace where he was living lacked contemporary style, luxury and comfort compared to the palaces of European monarchs. So he built the Dolmabahçe Palace with extensive usage of gold and crystal and it almost made him bankrupt. I'm not going inside because I've been here already a couple of years ago and because now the ticket for foreigners costs 650 Turkish Liras and I need to be careful about my budget nowadays. By the way, for locals the entrance costs almost five times cheaper, but I guess if you come to Istanbul it's worth visiting. Not far from the Dolmabahçe Palace there is an underground funicular line. It takes you directly to Taksim. Very convenient. Five minutes and you are there. Taksim is one of the most popular tourist destinations in Istanbul. The most famous place here is Istiklal Street, which has hundreds of shops and dozens of prestigious hotels and restaurants. The name Taksim comes from the Turkish word meaning division or distribution. This part of the city is called like that because in the 18th century it became the point where water was collected before being distributed throughout the whole city. Now I'm going to eat something strange, but it's special for this part of Istanbul, and it's wet burger. So they say that it's good to eat it at night after partying a lot. Let's see how it tastes. <laughs> Not bad actually. I guess especially at night after partying.
I would suggest you when you walk along the East Glen Street to turn right or left and explore also other little streets because you can find a lot of interesting places there. But the Istiklal Street can be your reference point. You can always come back here after taking some walk around in one or the other side. And of course, you need to see one more symbol of Istanbul, the Galata Tower. It was built in the 14th century, and at that time it was the tallest building in the city. Its height is 67 meters. The tower served multiple purposes during the Middle Ages and the Ottoman Empire, mostly related to defending the city from pirates and invaders, but nowadays it is used for entertainment. There is an observation deck on top of the tower, but it's quite expensive, and you can get a similar view from other towers or cafes with terraces located at the upper floors of buildings. After Galata Tower, I decided to visit another great spot in the city, Galata Port. It is a big open shopping and entertainment center, and at the same time it has the world's first underground cruise ship port that is connected to an underground terminal with a unique hatch system. So the whole passenger and luggage flow at Galata Port happens underground. The port can host three large cruise ships at the same time and serve 15,000 cruise passengers per day. It was so nice to see the magnificent ship Costa Deliciosa. I worked one contract on a cruise ship before, so it made me really nostalgic. Galata Port is a very popular place among the local people. It is nice to stroll along the seaside with amazing views of the Bosphorus Strait. There are a lot of cozy cafes and it's a good place for shopping. We met in the Galata port with my host and he kindly invited me for dinner. But he offered to take me to a place with more traditional food, a place where they have different types of kebabs and also meat dishes that originally come from the eastern part of Turkey. We ordered dishes from lamb meat, buryan and saj tava and they were really delicious. And after the dinner, we went to another cafe where we had a Turkish backgammon match. Ideally, you should come to Istanbul at least for a week to be able to see all its beautiful places without a hurry. We visited only some of them, but I really hope that I could show you the atmosphere of the city and I hope that I could encourage you to travel more. As you see, you do not need to be super rich for this, so travel, it's worth it. And if you like this video, don't forget to like it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!